you look in science, technology, engineering, and math, women make up 30% or less of the workforce. And one of the men would make a comment that would make me stop and think, oh yeah, you're a girl. Women were always the extreme minority. You go into a room, you kind of look around the room and you say, how many people are there in this room that look like me? How do we create an environment all along that pipeline that not just welcomes women, but actually actively encourages them? Because we know that's the key to success. Two, one, booster and the final liftoff of Discovery. I'm Ellen Stofan, the John and Adrian Mars Director of the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. That's a big, long title. This is what I do. I was the chief scientist of NASA from 2013 to 2016, and having that job was incredibly fun. I got to work on all kinds of science issues across NASA, from what are the next spacecraft that we're sending to study the Earth, out into the solar system, out to study the universe, to how are we actually going to get humans to Mars. An incredibly fun job, a great experience. It's an incredible honor to be the first female director of the National Air and Space Museum. I want every girl in this country to feel like she can grow up to be an astronaut, a pilot, or maybe someday the director of the National Air and Space Museum. You know, every day I walk into the museum and it still just fills me with awe because all of our artifacts tell the story of someone who went the fastest, someone who went the furthest, someone who went the highest. You know, when I was growing up, I actually, because I liked science, I would look to see who were the famous women in science and technology and engineering that had come before me. And you know, those stories were kind of few and far between. So that's one of the reasons when I became director of the museum, I put a photo wall on, on the wall in my office of women who've achieved amazing things in aviation and space. And so, for example, one of the women on the wall is Bessie Coleman. She was the first African-American to earn a pilot's license. Amelia Earhart's up on the wall. And Mae Jemison, who was the first African-American woman to fly in space. I think this is really important for girls to have role models, that they can look at someone and say, I can be that. Breaking barriers. Growing up, I had sort of an unusual background because my dad worked for NASA. He actually is a rocket engineer, and my mom was a science teacher. So I went to my first rocket launch when I was four. Having that environment where science and engineering and NASA and exploration were something we talked about at the dining room table. And so to me, to pursue that kind of field was natural. After my freshman year in college, I already knew that I wanted to be a planetary geologist. I interned at the Center for Earth and Planetary Studies, which is at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. And to me, it was the most awesome place in the world. I really never thought I would come back as director, and partially that was because that wasn't just something that I thought was a career path for women at the time. Dream bigger. But you just have to say, you know, I'm gonna get through this, I'm gonna stick with my goal, I'm gonna stick with my dream, and I'm gonna make it happen. Women actually make up less than 30% of the workforce, and in some cases much closer to 20% of the workforce, especially if you look at certain fields like engineering, computer science. And so you really have to think, why do those gaps still persist? And the problem is, it's really a pipeline problem. So girls are either actively discouraged or sort of subtly discouraged from the time they're young to say those aren't, those aren't things that women do. I would be in a conference room with you know 20 people, I was the only woman, and this one man, he actually had a terrible mouth and he would swear up a storm and then he would look at me and say, sorry Ellen, and then he'd talk some more and then he'd swear some more and then he'd look at me and say, sorry Ellen. And you say, oh well what's wrong with that? He was apologizing, but he was reminding everyone in the room that I was different. And again, then when you say, if I'm different, is this where I belong? So I would feel like I would have to work twice as hard to be taken half as seriously. And so I felt a huge amount of pressure early in my career. And I'm really passionate about this because I actually had huge support. I had huge support from my parents, from my teachers along the way, and from my professors. And so it's really important to me to say, would I have stayed if I had had people actively discourage or harass me? And and I'm not sure I would have. And so to me, it's really important to say, how do we move 
all girls forward. To the next generation. One of the things that's incredibly important for me is to support other women because I think as you move forward, you really need that support network. You need those people saying you belong. So I thought it would be good if we could really start thinking about how we're going to use technology in the galleries to bring the experience alive for kids. We're really focused on middle school kids. How can we really engage that next generation of explorers and innovators? So a lot of our programs here at the museum are how can we get them excited? How can we show them that engineering is fun? It helps you invent things like the space shuttle behind me. It helps you, you know, fly in a plane that's maybe gone higher or faster than any airplane has ever gone before. You have to lift all people up if anyone's being ignored. And one of the important things for me is let, let's make sure we also inspire them with stories of people who look like them. Uh, so whether you're a Latino boy, whether you're an African-American girl, I want to make sure you see yourself, someone who looks like you, that has achieved amazing things in the past here in the museum.